finally getting this video up. It, um, oh, hold on, I, uh, plan on getting this video up a lot earlier than I am currently. Um, I ended up filming this video earlier last week, and when I was editing it, I didn't cover as much as I wanted to, so I thought, you know, I'd film it all over again because I'm a perfectionist and I want to be able to give as much information as possible and um, I don't want you guys to really miss out on anything. So, um, before I begin, I want to just say that this is strictly advice. Um, there is no perfect way to do this or, um, you know, doing your first bikini competition, you can do it however you would like. Um, this is These are just tips um, that I wish I knew before I had started. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want to know everything I have to say, keep on watching. First thing that you need to know is it's going to cost money. A lot of money. <laughs> so I definitely wish that I knew how much it was going to cost before I had started um, prepping for my show. Um, and you're probably thinking, how is it going to cost a lot of money? I thought the same thing. Your coach, you're going to have to pay for your coach. You're going to need a gym membership. You're gonna need money for food, actual show day. You're gonna need money for your membership, that being within the association. You're gonna need money for a hotel. And if you're a lady, you're gonna need money for makeup and hair. These are all things that I'm gonna talk about in the video, but pretty much every single thing that I talk about in the video requires money. It's a very sad, sad thing. Um, so for me, I work two jobs during my competition prep, so that's just put into perspective how much money it costs. So that's the main thing is that it's gonna cost money. So accept it and then that's it. There's, there's no more talking about it. It's just someone's gonna tell you the price of something. You're gonna be like, okay, okay. And then just let it go because <laughs> there's literally no point in dwelling on it or regretting it or whatever because to me, to me it was worth it, but just so you know, it's a lot of money. You need to find out why you want to do a competition. If you're looking to lose a lot of weight, that's something to, that a lot of people work towards. And you have to find your why. And I say this because um, when you are doing a competition prep, based on uh, where your physique uh, starts, you're gonna have to diet down for a certain amount of time. So. Um, Within that time frame, there are going to be days where you are just going to hate your life and you are going to be very negative, you're going to be down and it's normal, right? Like you're, you're dieting and you're in a deficit. So having that why is really going to push you to stay on the right track to, you know, just keep going and st stay positive as much as possible. Um, that why is going to be your key to getting to the end goal. So for me, it was um, it was it was that next step that I needed to take in my fitness journey. Um, it was it was something that I knew was going to challenge me, and that was going to be one of the toughest things that I have ever done in my life. Um, and it was it was something that I needed to do to challenge myself, not only physically, but mentally as well. Um, but I can talk about that in another video. Another video, If you guys wanna hear more about my fitness journey, then I will definitely make a video for you guys. At the end of the day, you're gonna to need to find out why you are doing a bikini competition because it's just gonna, it's just gonna mean that much more when you actually get there and you're on stage and you know, you, if, you, if you're looking to place top five or you, you, uh, you do well, it's just gonna mean so much more to you. Style change. So if you're a person who goes out to party every weekend, goes to the gym about two to three times a week, um, and you know isn't too conscious about their diet, then I highly, highly, highly recommend you try to go to the gym every single day for six months, or sorry, you know, six days a week, whatever, um, for six months minimum, uh, and see if you like it first. Because I got a lot of messages on Facebook from people, um, sorry, Facebook, Instagram, and all my social medias from, you know, people I used to go to school with or just whoever, telling me that they wanted to do a bikini competition. And um, I had asked them, you know, like, are, are you into training? And, you know, they 
said no. So, I mean, you, you guys have to take these things into consideration. You are going to be at the gym two to three, well, two times a day. Like I said, depending on where your physique is, you're going to be there minimum two times a day. And if you're not used to going, you know, every single day, then that's going to be really, really hard on you. Um, also, diet. If you're not used to to really dieting or knowing what's what's clean and what isn't, um, what's going to happen is is you're gonna you're gonna prep for this show, and it's going to be such a drastic change that after your show, I, I've seen this a lot where um, people rebound really bad to the point where they end up gaining more weight um, post show than they do, sorry, they they end up gaining more weight than they had previous to the show, post-show. So they, and uh, you know, a lot of the time people develop eating disorders. Um, so you have to be very, very conscious of these things. You can't just completely change um, your lifestyle. You have to kind of slowly ease into it because it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be hard work. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be an every single day grind. Every single day counts. Um, so, you know, I highly recommend you know uh, dieting, or not dieting. Sorry, um, taking a better approach with your diet before and trying to get into the gym before a lot more before you you consider doing a uh, prep. Now, talking about diet. Um, when you diet down for a show, the, the thing that's amazing about bodybuilding or competition prep nowadays is that there's so many different options on how to diet down for your show. So um, there's, there's the old school way of dieting down for a show, which is very, very clean. Um, a lot of people call it the bro diet. Um, it's, you know, what you see sometimes on Instagram or whatever, you'll see a lot of people have a whole bunch of containers with chicken, broccoli, and rice. That's it. Um, it's usually like that. That's what they call a bro diet, where it's, it's very, very clean. It's kind of like your basic carb, um, fats, and proteins. And then there's a new. <clears throat> well, I'm not, sorry. I don't. It's not new. Well, at least I don't think it's new. But there's another approach that um, is now becoming very, very popular. It's called flexible dieting, where you have a set number of proteins, fats, and carbs, and as long as you, um, as long as you fit that number with, you know, whatever foods, then that's, that's what you can eat for the day. So, um, depending on, you know, what your diet is like going into a show, uh, you can choose which, which diet approach to take. Some coaches do strictly flexible dieting, or uh, another word for it is if it fits your macros. Uh, and then some coaches do strict uh, old school bodybuilding dieting uh, that you definitely figure out where what's going to help you ease into the prep a lot more and going to make it fun for you, fun and positive because that's the main thing. We want to stay happy and we want to stay healthy throughout our prep. So yeah, if this is your first show, um, I highly recommend you find a coach. And you can find a coach uh, online. Uh, I personally didn't want to do an online coach just because I wanted someone who was local, um, who could actually come to my show with me, uh, who I could you know, talk to um, every single day when I needed them. So, uh, you know, when it comes to doing your first show and having a coach, it's gonna be, make all that much of a difference when it comes down to when to lower your carbs, when to increase your cardio, when to decrease your cardio, when um, peak week comes along. I d don't know if you guys know what peak week is, but peak week is your last week of prep where most of the changes are made. It can either make or break your physique. Um, it's got a lot of water loading um, and water depletion and then carb loading, which is the best part. Find a coach who you're gonna be able to uh, communicate with when you need them. I um, was referred to my coach by a lot of my friends um, and I had I had seen his success through social medias so I, that's how I got with my coach and I was very lucky with him that him and I meshed very well. 
some people go through a couple coaches um, but that's you know strictly their own business for w whatever reason if they want to you know switch coaches or it could be diet approach could be training approach could be a ton of things but you need to find what's best for you because you like I said you want to be happy and you want to be healthy throughout your prep so find a coach because they know the best that's their job and they're gonna help you get to where you want to be this is probably one of my biggest um, things preached upon is uh, posing bikinis pretty big on posing like you got it you have definitely got to have your posing down it's so important um, you you know you worked so hard for however long to achieve the physique that you did and now you kind of want to show it off you want to be able to showcase your physique properly and you know you've worked hard to be up there you should be able to show it all off and to you know show it off properly when it comes to posing there's usually mandatory poses and this goes with what association you decide to compete in so that's another just that's another thing that you need to find out is um, what association you're going to compete with um, a lot of associations offer different things uh, a lot of them offer different classes some have costume classes some are just strict bikini where um, you can eventually work your way up to earn your pro card well i think most associations have um like a pro pro level but some classes some uh, associations have like costume classes and like fun classes which i think is super cool um <clears throat> so you need to find out what uh, association you would like to compete with and then after you have figured out what association you want to compete with you need to figure out a show date that way you and your coach can figure out your deadline and then you guys can work towards that so based on your deadline this is also going to give you a deadline um, for how long you have to practice your posing and to get your your presentation down so um, the thing with posing is that you know there could be another girl on stage beside me who looks better but if i perform better chances are you know i'll i'll, I'll get a little bit more attraction a little bit more points from the judges so practice your posing remember you are going to be in heels so practicing your heels it, especially if you're not used to walking in them and posing in heels is a whole different ball game so practice every single day if you can I practice almost every single day twice a day three times a day I would even make my food in my heels that I looked crazy but whatever I don't really care it paid off so practice 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 um, you want to be able to uh, show the judges that you've done this before and that you know what you're doing so practice your posing girls so once you have figured out who your coach is or who you've decided to go with to coach you for your show now if you know if, if you want to do it on your own and you have enough knowledge to do to do that then by all means for me i definitely didn't know how to dial myself in to my show i didn't know how to do the water loading and the carb loading and all that stuff so once you figured out your coach um you've figured out what association you want to compete with uh also your show date uh you figured out your your poses so each association has mandatory poses it's usually a front pose and a back pose i highly recommend you figure those out um earlier on that way when you take progress pictures it'll be easier for you to compare that same pose because you know obviously two poses two different poses are gonna you're gonna look completely different so try and figure out what looks best for your body um, earlier on in your prep after you have figured all of that out next thing the best part of doing a bikini competition is getting your bikini so um, for me I would highly recommend highly 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 recommend you getting a custom made fit bikini and I say this because everybody's body is different um, my friend may be let's say for example my friend may be a size small and her bikini fits me it isn't going to complement my physique as much as it would on her if it was custom made to her so I see a lot of girls you know buy previous bikinis which is fine it is very very expensive to buy to get a custom made bikini 
Um, but personally, it for me, for my first show, I wanted to, um, I wanted to kind of reward myself with my own custom made bikini. I thought I deserved it. I worked hard. Um, so why not get my own? And also another thing with getting a custom made bikini is that um, if you plan on competing later on, you can just use the same bikini and add to it or change stuff on it. So it's kind of an investment. Um, there's also another option of you renting bikinis um, where they, I think they can fit it to you. So that may be a better option if that's um, getting a custom made bikini is not within your budget. Um, I highly recommend it, um, just because, like I said, it's it's an investment. I planned on competing more than just once, so to me, it was I would get more, way more use out of it. These are not your everyday bikinis. These are strictly for the stage. Um, they are made a certain way, and usually within the association that you're competing with, your association will have certain guidelines or restrictions as to how much coverage you should have and that usually it's on the on your bottoms so um within i think in the states you can do like a brazilian uh bikini bottom within uh the association that i compete in we require 50 percent coverage so you're gonna need to get a custom made bikini for that because obviously you know that's gonna be hard to find and it, if you've got a big booty then uh you know you got to make sure that it fits because then you can get docked points for for not having the right bikini The great thing about getting a custom-made bikini is that you can choose Everything on it that being the connectors the color um, it, It's super fun for me. I loved my bikini and um, It just it's weird like it means I would never sell a bikini. It just means a lot more to me and I think it's kind of weird if I were to sell it, but, um, so when it comes to getting a custom made bikini, you want to, um, kind of leave the work up to the professionals. And when I say that is, uh, when I was, when I went in for my appointment to get my bikini done, um, with the crystal suit, who's actually my sponsor now, Colleen, hi, um, I had gone in thinking that I wanted a certain color um, and I ended up coming out with a completely different color. So uh, leave it up to the professionals to decide on which color. Um, most of the time professionals, or they should tell you, to kind of stay away from any orange color. Um, that being because your tan is super, super dark and mixed with the, the stage lights the bikini is going to kind of blend in with your skin tone and then you're going to end up looking naked. So you don't want that. If you do want that, then I think you're doing a bikini competition for the wrong reasons. But um, usually you want to stay away from any uh, color that's going to kind of match your skin tone. Uh, a lot of colors that are very popular right now are uh, greens are always, always in, blues are always in, reds, uh, purple, um, pink, uh, like teal blues, I, I see a lot of girls wear, it really depends on your skin tone and what you kind of want, what like persona you have, what kind of person you are, if you're more like an upbeat, like bright person, you know, then you'd go with a really bright color. Um, so it really, really depends what kind of look you're going for. But, um, like I said, definitely recommend you getting a custom made bikini. Um, it's definitely worth the money. And um, you got to treat yourself sometimes, right girls? Another thing that uh, I want to talk about is the actual show day. So the day of the show, um, you're going to need to get your makeup and your hair done. And you're also going to need to get your tan done. So sorry, your tan you get done the day before and then you get another coat the morning of. Um, so you need to figure out who you're getting your tan by. Most uh, shows have like a... Um, what is the they have like a sponsored tanning brand or whatever so the whoever's doing the tanning for the show um they usually do it on site so you need to figure out who's doing that and then get booked with them um and i highly recommend you book early because you don't want to have to wake up 
like four hours before you go on stage because trust me it's gonna be a long day and you don't want to have to wake up any earlier than you already have so you need to figure out who you're getting your tan by and when you get your tan you're gonna be shocked like you're gonna be dark <laughs> like, and if uh if you don't kind of like pre-prep your skin or like you're not too too dark before you get your tan done you might turn out a little bit orange so i i recommend you you get like a pre-tan or like try and get a little bit darker before you get your your, your spray tan done but um after you've got your tan you need to figure out who's doing your hair and makeup and this is no regular hair and makeup this is stage makeup i had actually planned on doing my own makeup for my first show but um based on how nervous i was i really um was i was a little bit too nervous and it was a little bit too risky for me to try and do my makeup on my own and my hair because if i mess it up i knew i'd be extremely upset so and i'm i like doing my makeup i'm a big makeup person but i didn't know how to do stage makeup like those stage lights are super bright so you need to be careful with what kind of foundation that you use um you know you want to obviously not use something that has a flashback on it or any SPF. Um, you have to be careful with your fake lashes because you don't want any lashes that are gonna kind of like shadow out your eyes. Um, because judges judges look at these things. They 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 look at your makeup. They look at your jewelry. They look at your hair. They look at everything. So you need to make sure that it's on point. So I definitely recommend hiring someone for that. You can find a ton of people. That's super easy to find. Um, the girl who did my makeup and hair. Uh, she does it for my team, so she was super easy to find, and um, it honestly makes such a difference because you're you're all over the place the whole entire day. You're kind of running around, so you I wouldn't want to have to worry about doing my makeup. Like I would literally go insane. So I got that done. Um, look at my little hair. Um, another thing that you need to book for the day of is uh, depending on where your show is, you're gonna need to book a hotel. So sorry, you need to book that before everything. Book your hotel, your hair and your makeup, your tan. Usually you would want your coach to come with you to your show. So you really need to figure out something with them to see if they can come with you. After your show is all done and you've been able to eat all the goods that you've wanted to eat, you need to talk to your coach or to whoever, whoever is doing your plan to give you a reversed and rebound diet. Now this is so important because you know, you've know you dieted and you've depleted yourself for so long that you're gonna wanna eat everything in sight. And yes, that's good for the first like couple days, but then it just may get out of control and then you will just get to the point where you'll gain some weight really, 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 really fast and it's gonna be very, very unhealthy for you and your metabolism could um, possibly be um, disturbed. <laughs> so you wanna talk to your coach about a reverse diet and um, and then go from there. So. All right guys, so that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. Knowing me, I forgot a couple things, but um, if you guys wanna know a little bit more details on each thing that I mentioned today, which was um, money, that's not really, you don't need to know anything else about that. Uh, your why, lifestyle change, coach, bikini, posing, makeup and hair, reverse diet. If you guys wanna know a little bit more information about that, I will do separate videos for each thing and um, talk through it a lot more with you guys. I kinda wanted to keep this video a little bit shorter, um, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be that way, so. It's a lot of information, there's a lot to know before you start doing your first bikini competition, um, so. Yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope I was able to give you enough information and enough insight before considering doing your first competition. Um, remember that if you like this, if you uh, enjoyed this video, thumbs up and share if you can. And also, if you haven't subscri subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. I'm also on Instagram. Uh, the same name is the same name as my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, if you guys want to request any other videos, please comment or uh, send me a message or whatever and I'll definitely get those up for you guys. Alright?